Hello students, welcome to Royal Palace Pew College, Jamkhandi online classes. My name is Sanjay sir and I'll be teaching you biology. Today we will be studying about the next topic of the chapter organisms and populations called as adaptation. Students, we have seen that the organisms are present everywhere on this earth and this word everywhere indicates that there are different habitats, there are different populations, there are different ecosystems and there are different biomes. Some places have got higher number of temperature, some places have got lowest number of temperature some places where in which the precipitation condition is high and in some places the precipitation is very low but in case of all these different biomes or ecosystems since these ecosystems have got highest and lowest temperature and precipitation conditions it does not mean that the organisms or the species do not stay there coming to the topic that whatever the temperature or precipitation conditions are there whatever the harsh conditions are there whatever the pretty whatever the nicer whatever the habitable or favorable habitats are there the organisms tend to stay there today's topic adaptation which clearly indicates that during the process of evolution with respect to different seasonal conditions with respect to different atmospheric conditions with respect to different forest ecosystem bio conditions the organisms changed morphologically the organisms changed physiologically and sometimes the organisms behaviorally for example migration they changed because of two reasons reason number one they needs to survive reason number two they wants to reproduce of course in these harsh conditions anyone who wants to survive and reproduce will definitely have will definitely have some kind of conditions some kind of changes some kind of variations in their external features in their internal physiological conditions and in their behavioral situations which in turn is a term today's term called as adaptation and these adaptations are not at all for only one species these adaptations with respect to evolution they have changed themselves in genetical way that's why these characteristics or these attributes are heritable these characteristics are transferred from their parent generation to the next generation and so on. Dear students, in our NCRT textbook, with respect to adaptation, the book has given us the book five has... examples. Let us list those examples first and we'll go further. Example number one or adaptation number one. Adaptation in kangaroo rat. Adaptation number two. Adaptation in desert plants. Adaptation number three. Adaptation of mammals in the cold climates. Adaptation number four. Adaptation in the desert lizards. Adaptation number five. Adaptation at high altitude in the humans. So these are the five adaptation examples we can see in our NCRT textbooks. Now students, let us enter into one by one of this topic and we'll understand it. This video will be very shorter because the topic is very smaller. If we start explaining about adaptations, it will take a lot of time. But as I mentioned in my previous videos also that whatever that is necessary and whatever that is present in our textbook, we'll be studying only that much. Okay, so let us enter into the adaptation number one. Adaptation number one that is adaptation in kangaroo rat now the first question arises kangaroo rat is it a rat or is it a kangaroo now easier understanding please do not get confused it's not a kangaroo it's actually a rat which morphologically appears like a kangaroo as the heading itself indicates that it is a desert or it is an organism which lives in the desert it is a common understanding that in the desert the water scarcity is there or the concentration of water is low and the precipitation conditions are also very less. Now these rats should have to be dependent on if they are vegetarian, 
then they should be dependent on some of the leaves fruits etc etc if it is a carnivorous or non vegetarian in nature it should be dependent on some of the other organisms or consumers in both these cases it is a complete necessary factor that these need water for their regulation of course the adaptation heading says that the kangaroo rat needs to survive and reproduce now what kind of adaptation it included during the course of evolution in its body point number 1 whatever the content that it eats of course we know a fact that whatever that we eat it should be resulting into the conversion of three points point number 1 proteins point number 2 carbohydrates and point number 3 fats whatever that we take it should have to enter into our body and it should have to get acclimatized accumulated and digested into our body and when it gets digested it should have to move into the bloodstream and then into the kidney where in which the blood gets purified and the waste product should have to be eliminated now there is a word called as oxidation of fat now whatever the energy that it is getting by the intake of fatty substances it is oxidizing those fat substances and when the oxidation of a fat occurs inside the body of that kangaroo rat there should be a byproduct right and this byproduct is water and this is how a kangaroo rat in the northern deserts meet its requirement of water i repeat it again that the kangaroo rats in the northern deserts meet the requirement of their water by the oxidation of fat where in which the end product or the byproduct of this oxidation of fat is water now we need to understand another point of the kangaroo rat itself point number two that it has got an ability to concentrate its urine so that if the urine gets concentrated enough then there is a less excretion of urine from its body try to remember that i have told two points with respect to kangaroo rats adaptation in the deserts point number one that is the oxidation of fat resulting into the byproduct of water and the concentration of urine so that the water cannot be excreted much from its body okay i hope you understood about kangaroo rat and its adaptation let's enter into another adaptation example adaptation number two adaptation in the desert plants so students we have three examples in the main example of adaptation of the plants which are present in the deserts point number one these desert plants have got a thick waxy coating onto the surface of their leaves so that this wax or this fatty content will not allow higher amount of water flowing through or throughout of this tomato so this is one of the adaptation of the desert plants where in which majority of the leaves are made up of waxy cuticle onto their surface this is point number one now point number two these desert plants have got a specialized mechanism or pathway called as c a m pathway or crassulation acid metabolism pathway now in this pathway we need to understand something about stomata stomata are those pore like structures which are present on the upper surface of a leaf or the ventral surface of a leaf or the dorsal surface of the leaf or the bottom surface of the leaf or two other parts of the leaf wherein which the opening and the closing of the stomata will help in exchange of water exchange of gases transfer of water etc etc since we are talking about desert since we know that in the desert the temperature conditions are more we can understand an easy factor that if the stomata opens during the daytime there is much loss of water during photosynthesis or you can consider this phenomenon as transpiration we have already studied this thing in first year right so transpiration is a process wherein which loss of water takes place due to the increase in temperature conditions but the desert plants have got a specialized adaptation wherein which they enter into a pathway called as a CAM which indicates that during the daytime the stomata will be closed and because of this in the daytime there is a minimum 
loss of water takes place and majority of the organisms they perform their photosynthesis during the night time we've understood about photosystem 1 photosystem 2 c3 plants and c4 plants in our first year syllabus please do recall it and adaptation number 3 in case of desert plants that some of the plants have got spines spicules or thorns in leaves so that it can get protected by others and the photosynthesis takes place through the flattened stem itself so dear students i mentioned three examples in case of adaptations in the desert plants point number one that the desert plants have got thick waxy cuticle onto their surface so that the minimum loss of water takes place Point number two, these undergo camp pathway, which is nothing but the during the daytime, the stomata remains closed. Once again, which is to stop or to reduce the rate of transpiration. Point number three, these contain spines or spicules onto their body instead of leaves and the photosynthesis takes place with respect to the flattened stem. So students, I hope you understood these two adaptation examples. So let us enter into the third example in case of adaptation and that is adaptation of mammals in the colder climates or colder regions. We need to understand one point here. As far as the mammals present in the colder regions, point of observation that we need to do now that the mammals have got shorter ears and shorter limbs and because of this shorter ear and shorter limb pattern which is a biological which is a physiological which is a behavioral change into their body they keep these kind of changes because of to maintain the minimum heat loss i repeat it again the mammals in the colder regions have got short ears and short limbs to reduce the heat loss and this particular phenomenon or a rule is called as allen's rule remember this is very important with respect to neat also what is an allen's rule allen's rule states that in case of the mammals living in the colder areas have got shorter ears and shorter limbs just to stop or to reduce or to decrease the heat loss from their body we can take an example of an aquatic uh, mammal called as seal it has got a thick fatty layer called as blubber onto its outer surface and this blubber acts as an insulator and reduces the excessive body heat this is the bestest example we can see in case of uh, the mammals in the colder regions and i repeat Back. it again Back. The seals have got a thick fat sheet or fatty layer onto their body called as a blubber and this blubber acts as an insulator to reduce the risk of heat loss from their body. Dear students, I hope you are understanding and you are following me through these uh, explanations and examples. Uh, till this time I have finished three adaptation examples. Adaptation number one, adaptation in the kangaroo rat, adaptation number two, adaptation in the uh, case of desert plants. Point number three, adaptation of mammals which appear in the colder regions. We will go to the next example, fourth example or fourth adaptation which is mentioned in case of NCRT textbook that is adaptation in desert lizards these desert lizards undergo two adaptations or mechanisms mechanism number one or adaptation number one when the desert lizards body temperature drops from the normal temperature then they enter outside their area just to absorb the sunlight or sun energy or heat from the sunlight point number one that when the temperature of these desert lizards when it decreases they enter into outside area such that the desert life itself they absorb the sunlight get the heat when the comfort zone decreases and if the temperature increases what they'll do of course vice versa of this when the temperature drops from their body they come outside to take the sunlight or sun heat when the temperature increases from outside what they do they enter into a shady area where in which the sunlight or the heat from the sunlight is less okay now this is the fourth example of the adaptation
Now we'll enter into the last adaptation, wherein which we'll be taking the examples of uh, humans here. Adaptation number five. Adaptation at high altitude in humans. We can easily understand a fact that majority of us are living in the planar areas wherein which the concentration of oxygen is equivalent. But when we start climbing a hill or when we start entering into the regions of high altitudes, high altitude in the sense uh, the regions wherein which the regions which are situated at a higher position from the ground level or in the mountains. For example, take an example of Leh. Take an example of Shimla, take an example of uh, Jharkhand, take an example of Uttarakhand, etc. etc. These are the places where in which the areas or the ecosystems are situated above the ground level or high altitude level. Of course, when we are living in the planar areas, our rate of breathing is very normal. But we and when we enter into the higher altitude area, the rate of breathing or the respiration starts decreasing. We feel a little nauseated. We feel a little uh, headache. We feel a little pain in respiration. So what kind of adaptation is observed in the people who are living in the higher altitudes? Their body is designed in such a way that they have got a tendency of production of increasing the RBCs in their body so that they can get the compensation of absorbing more amount of oxygen so that they won't feel any kind of scaredness, they won't feel any kind of decreasedness, they won't feel any kind of lackiness so that they can survive very easily into those areas. I repeat it again, there is a word called as altitude sickness. Remember, word called as altitude sickness which means that the people who are living in high altitudes or the people who enter into high altitudes, they feel a little nauseated, they feel a little under headache conditions, they feel under a little pain in breathing or respiration. This is called as altitude sickness. And the people who are living there, they have got a tendency of increasing their RBC cells in their body so that they can absorb more amount of oxygen, trap more amount of oxygen so that the breathing will become nicer and smoother.